this is not going to play out incredibly well at all for this particular individual corporation. And as ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. I hope you're well. How are you? Yes. Thank you. That will have a wave. Yes. I know. I know. It's a bit warm. I can see. You can see you're struggling. I know. I'm trying to keep the camera steady. It's so warm. So warm out here, by the way. Even though I've got one of those reinforced sticks, you know, I think it could melt. No, it's frightening, isn't it? You know, don't get, yes, I know. What was that phrase now? We've got globally boiled or something. Oh, we will be today, but come next week, it'll be raining again. If you've been to the United Kingdom, you know what I'm talking about. It lasts for about 10 minutes and everybody thinks the, the world's ended and then suddenly we're back to rain. Absolutely. Back as ever to your breaking ball story of the day. Now, there's one man that, as I say, I've been lucky enough to meet who is a very influential part in this particular story. We're talking, of course, about Earl Spencer, Princess Diana's brother, Charles Spencer. And he recently gave evidence, um, of course, against the case, the ongoing battle between himself, the BBC and that terrible, uh, absolutely disgusting cover up, whichever way you want to look at it, between the reporter Martin Bashir and the BBC. And it's interesting because now both he and Prince William are working together, and rightly so. They want to get to the bottom of the story. We told you earlier this year how the BBC have already uh, donated a substantial amount of British taxpayers' money uh, to said charities in order to placate the situation. But now there's around about 3,000 emails which have so far not been brought forward. And it's interesting when you think, because a lot of the players are still around, you know, 25, 26 years later. And let's not forget also that this particular video, this particular, uh, shall we say, whatever you want to call it, explosive interview, picked up a lot of awards that the BBC were very proudly of. Even though they knew way back when, allegedly, that this was all fake, you know, they knew the problems, and yet they continued to re-employ Martin Bashir as their religious editor. You couldn't make this stuff up, could you? Now, apparently Mr. Bashir is way too ill to be brought into the fray. Always very convenient, that, don't you think? But what I wanted to highlight to, to, to you, really, was this particular story, because, um, you know, El Spencer is not going away. He's going to fight this, because as he and everybody else now knows, these particular incidents regarding the BBC, the fake bank statements, which he was accused of, well, they're an integral part of clearing not just his uh, particular association with this story, but more importantly, the narrative, what's gone down in history. I'm sure, as I've said before, if the late Princess Diana had any idea, she would have simply walked away from this plot, but she was tricked beyond all belief. And finally now, and this is where it gets interesting, the BBC could finally be held to account. Obviously, the darker side is nothing can be brought back, and that's the sad part. I truly believe, with all this information that the late princess was fed, that that really turned her mind in a very twisted way against not just her own family, but other senior members of the British monarchy. When you read more deeply, as I've been lucky enough to do, you just wonder exactly what was the ultimate objective by that reporter, Martin Bashir. Whatever it was, fame, glory, and of course, wealth, he certainly achieved that, but at the cost of someone else's mind, and ultimately, many people say, life. So let's just wish the very best to Earl Spencer and, of course, the Prince of Wales battling forward to find out exactly what was said in all of those 3,000 emails that so far, allegedly, they couldn't find. Miraculously, they now have. It's a developing story, and when I know more, you'll know more. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.